In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to conduct some bootstrapping analyses in SPSS with respect to regression. And so this will give you an alternative way to get a p-value and confidence intervals for data, any type of data really, but especially when you have data that are non-normally distributed. And the rule that I use in the book is skew greater than 2 and kurtosis greater than 9. And I do make comments throughout the textbook saying that bootstrapping is a pretty attractive procedure pretty much any time. And so you might consider using it almost any time. So in the textbook, I presented the bootstrap confidence intervals for the example of education predicting earnings. And we obtain an alternative p-value of 0 0.056 and confidence intervals for the unstandardized beta weight equal to negative 0 0.508 and an upper bound of 14.238. So how did I get those values? Well, first I'll point out that this is based on 1,000 bootstrap samples. So that's going to help me I try to replicate this result. So what I did is I went into Analyze, Regression, Linear, and Education in the Independent Variable Box, Earnings Per Day in the Dependent Variable Box. And if you have bootstrapping as a module in your SPSS package, you'll see a button here called Bootstrap. If you don't, then you don't have access to bootstrapping. There is syntax out there to actually conduct bootstrapping analyses. I may do a video in the future about using the syntax in case you don't have the button. So stay tuned for that, particularly on my How-To Stats channel. Click on Perform Bootstrapping and 1,000 samples. So that's how many times the analysis is going to rerun, resample, for the purposes of creating a sampling distribution. I'm not going to cover bootstrapping from a beginning here. I'm assuming that you've covered the chapter on correlation because I talk about bootstrapping a lot more there as an introduction. Click on Bias Corrected Accelerated, click Continue, and click OK. And SPSS is going to run this analysis, and it's going to take a minute or so, depending on how fast your computer is, because it's having to, oh, there you go, it didn't take me long at all. We have here the bootstrap results where this time I have a p-value of 0 0.069, and that's exactly the sort of thing that can happen. You'll see that in this case I got 0 0.056, but the point estimate is the same. So 7.609, point estimate will always be the same, but all other aspects will be different because whatever 1,000 samples your run does won't be the same 1,000 samples that mine does. And even if I did the analysis over and over again, I will get a different p-value. It will be within a range. It's not going to be wildly different, but it will be a little bit different. You also get the unstandardized confidence intervals and bootstrapped p-value for the intercept. Now, I've mentioned before, usually we're not interested in testing the null hypothesis of zero for the intercept. We're really focally interested in the unstandardized beta weight which in this case is suggesting that the relationship between years of education and earnings is not significant statistically, which is in contrast to the normal theory p-value that I reported and obtained, which will always be the same on the same data set. And I mentioned in the textbook that all too often, this is how real-world data exist, is that it's a little bit messy. You don't always get concordance across analyses. Now, one of the reasons that this is happening is that, let me deselect bootstrapping because I don't want that to run again, is that there actually is a little bit of skew and kurtosis, particularly with the earnings variable. Well, let's look at both. So the skewness for earnings per day is 0.91, and the skewness for education is 0.22. Now, getting close to 1 is fairly skewed. It's not immensely problematic skew, but it is some level of skew that is not puny. Let's look at the distribution. We can see earnings per day here as an obvious positively skewed element to it. Now the rule of skew of 2 and kurtosis of 9, strictly speaking, it will work more frequently when both variables are skewed in exactly the same way. So that is a limitation with the simulation research right now is that there's not a lot evaluating the robustness of a normal theory p-value when the skewness levels are different across variables. So if I had to trust something here, given that there is some skew here, you can't ignore it, and more importantly, the skew levels between earnings and education are different by, you know, about 0.6-ish. Anything less than 0 0.5, 0 0.4 is not a big difference, I would say, but certainly above 0.5 difference in skew is starting to get a bit on the bigger side. And we're now seeing some difference between the p-values. 
it's not a huge difference. I mean, it's still in the ballpark of 0.05. I only just barely rejected the null hypothesis here with a value less than 0.05. And when I do the bootstrapping, I don't get statistical significance. And if I had to trust one p-value over the other, usually I would trust the bootstrapping. So in this case, the null hypothesis of no relationship between education and earnings has not been rejected. But we have to bear in mind that even though I simulated these data to produce an intercept and a slope to be very close to the Zagorski study, the Zagorski study wasn't based on a sample size of 40. It was over 5,000 people in the Zagorski study. And so his result is definitely statistically significant with the same point estimates. I used 40 to make things interesting. And I think in this case, this is the sort of thing that can happen in reality. Now, what if you wanted the confidence intervals for the standardized slope? A lot of the times, you'll have a beta weight. And it's really the standardized beta weight that you're interested in because the unstandardized beta weight is not very meaningful for your analysis. To get that, you've got to go into Analyze and transform your data into Z-scores. So put Education in here and Earnings Per Day here and get the Standardized Values as Variables option so that you can get two Z-score variables. So Education is now a Z-score, all Z-scores, and Earnings is all Z-scores. And now I can rerun the regression with the bootstrapping with these Z-scored variables which will produce the bootstrapped p-value and the bootstrapped confidence intervals for the standardized beta weight. So education in the independent variable box and the earnings per day in the dependent. Click on bootstrap. I want the bootstrapping now, 1,000 samples. I would argue that you should probably do 2,000 if you have the time to do it. So I'm going to do 2,000 this time. 1,000 is fine, but I do think 2,000 you're getting close to what is the point of law of diminishing returns where you're not really getting much more bang for your buck by doing more. So this is going to take longer than the 1,000 run. Not a huge amount more time, but a little bit more time. And here we go. We have the results now. So now I've got the bootstrapped standardized confidence intervals. And we can see that I've basically tricked SPSS into thinking that this is an unstandardized beta weight when really it's a standardized beta weight now that I'm using standardized variables. And we can see that the p-value is still not statistically significant, 0.073. It's not exactly the same as the unstandardized run. It's a slightly different analysis. And it's also a different set of samples. And we can see that the lower and upper bound is intersecting with zero which implies that the relationship between years of education and earnings per day is not statistically significant because we can't say whether it's positive or negative here. We're just saying it's intersecting with zero. So that is a way to get the standardized confidence intervals for bootstrapped in SPSS. I wouldn't trust, I mentioned in the textbook, I wouldn't trust getting the standardized confidence intervals through the non-bootstrap procedure. So what I'll point out here is I could get regression linear statistics, confidence intervals, and click bootstrap. I don't want the bootstrapping to be reconducted. And you can see that here I'm getting confidence intervals for the standardized beta weight because I still use the z-scored variables in this analysis. And I'm getting a lower bound of 0 0.028 and an upper bound of 0 0.646. This is only approximate normal theory standardized confidence intervals. I do show in the chapter on Pearson correlation how to get appropriate confidence intervals, normal theory confidence intervals, for a Pearson correlation, which you could use as a substitute for the standardized beta weight. Overall, though, if you have the bootstrapped utility module in SPSS, then you can just click a couple buttons and get it automatically for you. And I would trust these as an estimate of the standardized 95% confidence intervals over the normal theory tricking procedure. So that is bootstrapping in SPSS for the bivariate regression case.